She knew that they were coming for Thanksgiving. And she knew that she had a lot to do in order to get ready. She knew that her brother and sister-in-law, along with their three children and their labradoodle puppy, were arriving on Wednesday. So on Tuesday morning, she sat at Starbucks, sipping expensive coffee and using her smartphone to make a list of all the things she had to do in order to get ready for their arrival. And it was a long list. Buy the groceries. Move the boxes off the bed in the guest room. Put sodas in the refrigerator. Borrow Disney DVDs so that the kids will have something to watch. Thaw the turkey. Don't forget, thaw the turkey. Make the pie crust. The list kept getting longer and longer. And she felt just a pinch of guilt. And she said to herself, maybe I should have done some of this sooner. But she had time. There's always time. She told herself, after all, they don't arrive until tomorrow. <laughs> and that's when her phone rang. It was her brother. And he said, hi, sis, we're here. And she said, you're where? And he said, we're in your driveway. Where are you? In a panic, she shouted into the phone, you are not supposed to be here today. You are arriving tomorrow. And her brother calmly replied, sis, you better, text, you better check your text messages because I told you that we would be here today. She hung up her phone. She cursed. She spilled her expensive coffee. She cursed again. Then six other patrons of Starbuck temporarily looked up from their own cell phones to see a frazzled woman running out of the store, saying to herself over and over again, it can't be today. I'm not ready today. I was counting on tomorrow, not today. In the Gospel of Luke, there is no more consoling or challenging word than today. That word, today, keeps appearing through Luke's Gospel. It's consoling because when the angel appears to the shepherds on that first Christmas Eve, the angel says, Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you, who is Christ the Lord. When Jesus begins his public ministry in the synagogue at Nazareth, he reads Isaiah's description of the kingdom of God, and then he rolls up the scroll and he says, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And on the cross, he looks compassionately at the repentant thief, and he promises, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Today. How consoling. We follow a Savior who looks us in the eye and says, Today you will be with me. Today I'll be with you. And yet, if we're honest, many of us may be like the woman at Starbucks. Intellectually, we know that we must do some things in our lives in order to really make room for Christ's arrival. But many times we don't want to do that spiritual work today. It can't be today. We're not ready for today. We don't want it to be today. We would like more time to sit at Starbucks and distract ourselves with electronic gadgets and devices. We'd like some time to tell ourselves that there's, there's plenty of time to do what's necessary in our spiritual walk with the Lord. We'll get around to that serious spiritual work some other day. You see, if Christ really wants His kingdom, His kingship, to become concrete in our lives today, then that means He is going to act in our lives today. 
and our lives need to change today. If Christ wants to become concrete and powerful in our lives today, then that means that you and I are going to have to respond today. But so often, at least in my life, I say, it, it, it can't be today. <laughs> I'm not ready today. Sometimes uh, it's, it's kind of safer to tell ourselves that salvation and holiness and l a living relationship with Jesus is better delayed a little bit into the future when we're going to have more time for all of that. So the reality of Christ's kingship and the conversion demanded by his kingdom is best held off until tomorrow where it can stay snugly packed away and at rest and ultimately inconsequential. But as Luke tells the story, on the cross, Jesus did not say, tomorrow you'll be with me in paradise. He says, today. In the synagogue at Nazareth, Jesus did not say, tomorrow this scripture will be fulfilled. He said, today. On Christmas Eve, the angel did not say, Tomorrow the Savior will take flesh for you. The angel said, Today. In the New Testament, so much of Christ's truth hangs on one word. Today. For Jesus, God's today was the center of his existence. God had made many promises to Israel and Jesus knows that those promised blessings are happening now, today. If we believe what Jesus says, then that means we can also be set free today, free from our obsessions, free from the destructive compulsions which try to control us, free from the selfishness which causes us to judge our neighbor. We can be set free by Jesus so that we can breathe again through the power of Jesus, so that we can trust again through the love of Jesus, so that we can live again because Jesus is alive in us today. Today is a scary word in Luke's gospel. Jesus really means it when he says that we can be with him today that we can experience his power today, that we can live in his kingdom today. But that means that I must be willing to change today. <laughs> and then I say, can't be today. I enjoy sitting at Starbucks, distracted by my electronic gadget, making lists, even spiritual lists, of what I'm going to do someday but not today. You see, God is not hesitant, but human beings are hesitant to turn our lives to Him and to turn our lives around. Sometimes people prefer not to let God get too close, so we make what we think are honorable excuses. But Jesus' word today reminds me that I don't have more time to waste or to wait. The world's chaos surrounds us. Just watch the news and you'll see that's true. So we have to act today because we have been called by God's Son. You have put your whole existence on the line, dear Jesus. Jesus, you have put your existence on the line. And he has given us his spirit and his power. And we have received God's invitation. And that invitation is given today. So don't forget that in today's gospel reading, Jesus speaks that beautiful word today while he's hanging on the cross. His head, his hands, his feet are bleeding. His lungs are gasping for breath. As you consider the picture of Jesus on the cross, 
you are reminded that the kingdom of God does not become concrete without sacrifice. It doesn't come without daily dying. It can't come any other way. In the midst of a society and a church and a people who are so often reluctant to change, God's realm becomes real today only through sacrifice. Today, we can experience Christ's love and power and wisdom and mercy, but that means that today I must remove the barriers to his kingdom that are in my soul. I have to remove them with the help of his grace. I must, with God's help, remove the greed in me, the pride in me, the love of comfort that's in me. I must, with God's help, remove the ambition in me, the, the envy in me, the anger in me. I must remove the laziness and the lustfulness and the self-centeredness and impatience in me. Today, with God's help, I have to remove those bad habits, my messed up priorities, my false sense of power. Today, I must embrace Jesus' vision for the world, a world of nonviolence and economic justice and opportunity. To do that, I may need to let go of some of the things I thought I was certain of. Today, I have to let them go. Today, I have to turn to Christ. Today, I must be willing to sacrifice so that the poor may be fed and the lonely may be visited and the sick may be healed and those burdened by the world's injustice may have freedom. Wait, is that today? I'm not ready for you yet, Jesus. I thought of this was, this was all going to arrive, you know, tomorrow. But no, check your biblical text. It's all about Christ becoming King and Lord and lover of your life today. So put down your coffee and turn off your phone and sacrifice, change for the one who promises you paradise today.